Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon, and you are in for a treat. We've got a great group, and we're very proud of them. And of course, a big thank you to all of you who have been supporting them along the way. And with that, I would like to introduce our first presenter, Paul Walker. Hi. Hi. I'm Paul Walker, you know, uh, not the Fast and Furious one. Um, welcome to my senior presentation. Alrighty. So, today you will be viewing a series of my projects that I've done over the course of my years here in the animation concentration. Um, first up, we've got my, my demo reel, which is just a few of my favorite videos that I've done, animations, you know, any 3D modeling, just kind of like a bunch of those put together in one video. So, just play on that. So that was my demo reel. And that's the end of my presentation. Yeah. All right, so today we're going to be sh I'm going to be showing you guys three projects which I have done some in the past, two of them which are in the past, and one I've done this year, and that is my capstone. To start off, this was a themescape that we were told to pick a theme, any theme. And like many of you guys, I love coffee. We all love coffee. We drink it every day. So I was like, I'm going to do an animation about coffee. But not just like an animation about just coffee. I want to approach this project as like a commercial for a local cafe that I go to frequently whenever I'm home in Concord near Charlotte. It's called Lentz Cafe. So this is my Lentz coffee animation. First, I'd like to show you guys a little bit of my storyboarding, which is like sketches of my ideas, what I wanted the animation to look like in the beginning. So these are like the beginnings thought, like the beginning thoughts I had starting out. Um, you'll see that there's changes because the ideas develop over time as I'm animating. I might realize, dang, that was a crappy idea. I don't think I can do that. So we move on and, you know, I develop a little bit more. And after storyboarding, we do style frames, which is images we create to use as direct reference whenever we're creating the animation. So basically, I'm creating what is going to be in the animation, so I know the look of it while I'm in whatever program I'm using to um, create it. And this is the animation that I came out with. Animation. 
short and sweet. Uh, next up is a project which was an infographic we were supposed to make last year in our motion design class. Um, this is a bee animation. I chose bees because I love honey. I love bees. My uncle's a beekeeper, my aunt's a beekeeper. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, this is gonna be a fun project. I, did, I was like, if I do this, I can get input from my, my uncle and my aunt if they could give me any. And if I need to create my own audio, I'll just have them do the voice. I ended up not going with doing that, and I just found a video with a bunch of bee facts. Um, first off, again, thumbnails, storyboards. These are all my thumbnails that I had drawn out, trying to figure out what kind of like style I wanted to go for. Um, it changed a lot over like the course of time while I was sketching. I was like, that doesn't look good. Um, it was going to be a lot more simpler than it, what, it, what it turns out to be. This is my second try. It's very similar to those thumbnails that you just previous, previously saw. Um, definitely lots of changes. Like, I ended up doing a lot less pie charts. I felt that was really boring. I was like, I'll just stick with really eye-grabbing visuals and less of like the information. So I'll depend on the audio to tell you guys what the facts are. Um, this was some style frames slash storyboards that I created. I wanted to get a better idea of the look, so I developed these um, pretty rough looking style frames. And this is that project. The reason we call people who have to tend to so many duties a busy bee is because bees themselves are often quite busy. Bees are some of the most hardworking animals ever. In their colony, they each have a role to fulfill. Together, they make the sweetest honey. Of course, that isn't all there is to these insects. Beyond the buzzing, yellow stripes, and sharp stingers, there's still a lot that people don't know about bees. If you're curious to find out more, then keep watching for these surprising bee facts. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more bee facts and spread the world one click at a time. Number one. There are around 20,000 species of bees. Bees belong to the polydice family. There are so many types of bees, and each one is different from the other. Some examples of these bee species are honeybees and bumblebees. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you can see, I didn't get too many facts in my animation. <laughs> But well, that comes from poor planning. Um, I learned from my mistakes. Um, so, next up is my capstone project, which is the main thing we're gonna talk about today. So, early on in the semester, whenever we were figuring out what we were gonna be doing for our projects, I had no idea. But one day, I saw that my friend Justin had a book about Norse mythology, so I picked it up and I was like, okay, this is cool. It's by a guy named Neil Gaiman. You'll know him. He writes, he wrote the book Coraline. Yeah? Yeah? I'm sure people have watched that movie. Um, it was really good. I love the characters. I love the take that he had on it. They were funny. They were lovable characters. Um, I don't know. This just really, I was passionate about it. So I decided to do a project based on a story of how Loki <laughs> decided it was a good idea to cut off Thor's wife, Sif's hair. And he got in a whole bunch of trouble for it. And I was like, that'd be a funny story to animate. Or at first, I was just gonna do character designs and visual development stuff, which is what we're gonna go through real quick. So I didn't start off with designing Loki, which is the main character slash protagonist, not protagonist, antagonist, but he's not an evil guy. He's just the antagonist of the story. Um, I, through designing him, I decided that it would be best for me to do a 2D um, illustration rather than like a 3D animation because I felt it captured the story a lot better in the style that I wanted. So while designing him, I made that decision to do 2D rather than 3D designs. And in the story, Loki turns into a bug and he has to uh, harm two dwarves so they don't uh, win in a competition against him so he doesn't lose his head. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so in the story, he goes and gets help from two groups of dwarves, the Evaldi brothers and Brock and Itri. 
and this is Brock and Eatry. <laughs> now, Brock and Eatry, they didn't fall for this idea that the gods were just wanting uh, them to create Sif some new hair, which he tried to get uh, them to <clears throat> create Sif new hair so he doesn't get killed by Thor. Um, anyways, this is Brock and Eatry. They're dwarves. Um, they don't like Loki. So on the left here is my first designs for them. This is the people that I started off designing. And it was originally going to be a 3D project, so I had a more rendered version of their designs. And you'll see that that's a lot more polymetric and 3D looking than the other designs you've seen before this one. Uh, this is Odin. Very simple. I didn't spend too much time designing him because all he does in the story is say, I like this present. I don't like this present. So I was like, there's not much to him. This is the Ivaldi brothers, the other group of dwarves which fall for Loki's scheme of tricking them into creating a bunch of gifts for the gods. Um, this is a 2D turnaround of one of the brothers that I did. This is that same 2D turnaround, just putting all the different views. Some sketches and silhouettes of said characters. Thor. I changed him a lot through designing. Like he went from very big, bulky, serious looking guy to a funny, larger guy to an upside down Dorito, <laughs> which is what he pretty much ends up as. So on your left was my first idea. I was like, just real beefy guy, red hair. Um, on your right is what I thought was going to be my final design. Um, I really liked his hair and his beard. And I kept those aspects of him. So, bottom there. That is a frame from my storyboard that I created for this whole project. And you'll see that like it's a good mixture between the two designs that I ended up with, so it would be easier to animate him, him with. Um, this is more sketches of Thor. Um, see some silhouettes on top. You'll see like some of the ideas that I went through. Like on the upper left, that's that more serious looking Thor. This is an unused version of Thor that I really liked, but I felt would be way too hard to animate. Uh, because this is so much aspects to him. He's got his little strap, he's got a belt. I was like, ah, can't do it. This is some environments. I didn't do too many environments because I kind of steered away from doing all of his dev. I kind of was really rooted for just character design because that's what I was enjoying doing. That is a 3D model of Thor's hammer that I made so that I could get a good idea of what it would look like in different perspectives to make it easier while designing the 2D versions. Now the next two are some designs that I did early on whenever I was designing Brock and Eatry as 3D characters for a 3D project. And you'll see like this one's also very rendered because I was going to 3D model it because that's what the project was going towards. Another um, <laughs> prop that I designed. Now, after finishing all my character designs, I really felt like I really wanted to do like a storyboard or like continue on with these characters and bring them to life. So about three weeks ago, I started storyboarding an idea of what this would look like if it was adapted into an animated short. And with the help of one of my friends, I was able to like refine it some to get a good idea of what I wanted to do. And um, I did that. And then I decided that I wanted to make an animatic during that time. Um, an animatic is like a moving storyboard, basically. And um, that's what I'm going to show you next. That was like my final capstone. So here it is.
Yeah, so I hope that over the summer this will be a fun project for me to finish up and create like a, a series of these. Thank you for coming. Now, up next we have Nikki Lyles. It was a bad day to wear these boots. <laughs> Welcome to the senior presentation and thank you for coming. So as always, we're gonna start off with the demo reel. I mostly do 2D work, so that's like all you're gonna see. first project I want to show before I show my capstone is a group project that I worked on in one of the past semesters. I got to work with our very own Zoe and Ash, so if you two could stand up and please be recognized. <laughs> together we worked very hard to put together an animated short that features a skeleton who is trying to find the perfect candle to stick into his pumpkin bindle, but happens to pick a very wrong choice. <laughs> so please wish him luck, and I'd like to present Wix Waxy Fix.
normally what we would do with the group projects is the first person to present will show the entire group project and from then on out uh, the following members will show their contribution to it. With this one, it was kind of, in animation terms, split directly down the middle. So Ashton animated the entire first half and I animated the entire second half. So I'm not gonna make you watch that entire thing again just to show you something you already seen to save you the torture. <laughs> the, all right. <laughs> the next project I wanna show is my stop motion project. I did this first uh, class a couple semesters ago and I used, I'm really into sewing besides animation, so I used like found objects around my house like needles, thread, cotton ball, and I brought this cotton ball to life to tell a story about it trying to make something despite its size and lack of ability. So please enjoy Sewed Up. <laughs> before I get to the capstone is an animated infographic I did. An infographic is basically just a way, a style of conveying information that is engaging to the viewer and not just dying of boredom looking at a bunch of words on a blank sheet of paper. So for my infographic, I decided to do it on deer because I love deer. Uh, please enjoy and I hope you learned something because if you didn't, that means I did something wrong. <laughs> Stone. I wanted to commemorate the memories that I made with my friends over at ECU these past four years, so I decided to throw it into a little music video. And before I show you the actual video, I want to introduce you to these people so they're not just like strangers on a screen. Here are the girls who I think are here today, right? There you losers are! Okay, I'm so glad. So on the left, we have Cheyenne. She is undoubtedly the coolest one out of any of us in the group. She can outdrink a bear. No one knows, or she, she knows more about cars than her actual degree, and no one can spell her name right. I had to make sure I did this right like three times before I made it. In the middle, we have Mel. She is your staple gamer girl. Any anime you recommend, she's already watched it. She makes a pretty mean spaghetti. 
and her bed is made of more frog squishmallows than bed. And on the right, we have Serena. She is the animal nature lover. She wishes she was born a mushroom instead of a person. She acts calm, but I'm scared of what's really inside of her, and she has the stare. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. We have the boys. Unfortunately, two of them couldn't make it today because they're losers. No, not actually. <laughs> um, but they're at home right now working, getting that money. So on the left, we have Dalton. His hair frequently changes color. He has a D&D &D campaign that's been going on since birth. I've never seen one so good at Beat Saber. And Beat Saber is this virtual reality game where like these blocks are flying at you to this really fast music. And you're like, psh, 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 and this dude's doing flips trying to get it. Would you believe this guy is a teacher? <laughs> in the middle we have Jonathan. Now Jonathan actually graduated from East Carolina last semester in the animation degree too. So he hurts people emotionally but for fun. <laughs> he has a skincare routine longer than the Bible. He sings when he's uncomfortable situations and he has his iconic gulp. And on the right we have our very own Josh. He owns a lot of video games but he doesn't play any of them. He knows everything about punk and rock history. He is always scared of something. Hey, babe. <laughs> and with that, I'd like to present my capstone, Cooperatively Stupid. <laughs> to call up Jaren to the stage. times let's see <laughs> all right so uh, hi as you know I am Jaron um, uh, so um, welcome to you know everything here hopefully you're enjoying it so far you haven't gotten tired yet you still got a lot to go <laughs> um, so uh, I usually do um, like 2d 3d animations for my work um, and that's something that I've really loved doing throughout the semester so Here's a little demo reel to show those highlights as soon as I get into the actual slideshow mode because I forget to do that. Here you go. And we go.
projects that I worked on over my years here and then my final little bit. So let's start with Colomancy. Um, Colomancy is a, a, a group project uh, 2D animation that I worked on with um, Lauren, Matt, and Sebastian. Uh, if you want to stand up, let yourselves be known. <laughs> I also worked on it with uh, the aforementioned Jonathan who was in Nikki's uh, capstone. Uh, he couldn't make it, but... Boo! Boo. <laughs> um, it was probably one of my favorite projects to work on. It was this, um, it was a 2D short about this uh, kitchen in a world where magic is normal, but magic is not allowed in the kitchen. However, our main character, the chef, uses magic as a shortcut for a, a food critic's order, and it doesn't go as well as you might hope. So here we go. Let's have a look.
Wasn't that a nice little story there? <laughs> um, so basically, when we were putting together this project, um, we decided to basically like split, split everything amongst the group throughout the entire pop pipeline, um, from doing the idea boards to get the basic ideas and pacing of the short, all the way to like character designs, which I designed the, uh, the monster for the short. I uh, tried to make it sort of like this amalgamation of different vegetables and meats. Um, this is the final turnarounds for that. Um, and we also each did storyboard scenes and animating all of it fully. Um, I did the scene for when the manager first appears and tells the chef that he's late, and also the little baguette sword fight that you saw. Um, and this was the animation process of it, from sketches to line art to final backgrounds and colors. And next up we have Wicked Sick, which, um, funny story with the title of this, uh, for, our, for the titles for our uh, projects, we weren't allowed to use the names of the assignments. However, for this one, the name of the assignment was so ingrained into my idea for this assignment that I just had to stick with it. Because basically the project was called Wicked Sick as an assignment, and that gave me the idea of what if it was about a witch who was sick, a wicked witch getting sick. <laughs> <laughs> and so I ended up with this little uh, 3D animation here. For this project, we had to start out with at least two different ideas for what we wanted to do. Um, one of my, my other idea that I ended up not going with was um, this little astronaut who finds a butterfly on an asteroid and the butterfly hijacks his ship. <laughs> um, the other one, you know, I did all these turnarounds for um, making the characters in 3D in uh, Autodesk Maya. Uh, I modeled them, rigged them, designed them all myself. Um, I was originally going to have the house explode after the um, after the fro the little monster turned into a frog. Um, I didn't have the time for that mostly, but I really wish I could have done that. 
But um, yeah, so next up, my capstone. Um, this was something that I was really proud of. Um, it's it's sort of like the third project plus my capstone because um, I just this was a game design document that I had made in our one of our game design classes um, called Remia and the Sleepless Curse. Um, in this game uh, is a 3D platformer. Uh, the story is uh, about this novice mage named Remia who is trying to save the world from a curse of insomnia, um, despite the fact that the only spells that she knows is how to shoot bubbles. <laughs> um, basically, the whole mechanic would surround you um, capturing your opponents in bubbles and bouncing off of those bubbles to defeat them. Um, I started out with uh, designing Remia. I wanted to have this round, cute animal character as the sort of representation of the entire thing. Um, this was the final work up to the final design here. She's adorable and my favorite thing I've ever created. <laughs> um, and this was the first ZBrush sculpt that I had made for, the, for that class. Um, I, I really liked learning about all of that. It was very fun. Um, next was the, the, en I mean, the enemies that you'd be encountering in the game. These, I wanted to have it some kind of like simple blob-like creature to be like, oh, this is like the first little like weak enemy that you show up and see. But I also wanted it to be, I wanted it to be cute, but also kind of creepy. So it basically, when it sees you, it has this big toothy grin, and then it lunges at you and tries to chomp your head off. <laughs> <laughs> um, then this was the final turnaround for it, named it Bloblin. Because of course he's a little blob goblin dude. Love him. Here's the environments that I had sketched out for it. I wanted to go for a sort of timeless, whimsical look for the world. And uh, I created assets and level design for it as well in um, Unreal Engine. And then that brings us to our capstone uh, because I loved this project so much that I didn't want to put it down for my. Um, for my final. Uh, so I brought it into the final as animating the character. Uh, I basically decided to create a new character model from scratch in Autodesk Maya and model it and rig it and create some basic animations for that model. So this is the redone model with um, Maya poly modeling. Uh, most of the stuff has been changed. The only things I didn't change were the tail and the neck fluff. Um, I wanted to go with like something special for the face because um, I didn't want to just like do like a, a mesh rig like most 3D animations would do. Um, so I wanted I decided to draw actual like faces on uh, in like PNGs and make the, like a certain part of the mesh display those um, facial features when shifted around. Um, this was the uh, the rig and model that I had to do for it. Um, I, this is probably one of the most complex, uh, most complex skeletons that I've ever done for a 3D model, and definitely one of my favorites because of that. I'm really proud of how that turned out. I had to even do like weight painting stuff, which is basically um, applying the influence of those bones. And this was some pose tests that I did to make sure everything was in order and we went right into animating it. Um, so this is like an attack animation that I had done for her. Um, I've got the first idle animation that I did, which was very too energetic and moving around too much, I thought. So um, after running it by, classmates decided to have a bit more of a subtle movement for her animation. Um, and then some movement animations for her walking and running. Um, I wanted to have a sort of floating mechanic in the game where you can jump up into the air and then like she would make a giant bubble with her wand and sort of gently float down on it. Um, and so that's the animation for those. And then I managed to have a little extra time after all that was done. So I put a few of those animations into Unreal Engine and did some basic Unreal Engine blueprint coding to make it so that she could move around properly. Oh 
I really love how I was able to make her feel very like bouncy and cartoony. <laughs> And yeah, that is my capstone project. And <laughs> seeing all of this now, it made me very like happy to see how far I'd come with everything. And it's not that. <laughs> um, I'm I'm really glad to have been able to take all these courses here. And so, thank you for watching my things, and next we have Josh Mullen. How's everybody doing? Good. Good. I like to hear it. My name is Josh. I will be presenting the capstone two or three, was it two animations? I can't remember. But um, what I'll be presenting to you today, well, first off, let me give some clarity to it. Before, um, one of the biggest things that happened in this class specifically was that Professor McIntyre would always approach me for every presentation and would go, what you got, Josh? <laughs> Sometimes I had a good answer. <laughs> Others I didn't, but it's okay, because I think inevitably it worked out in the end. Here's to you, Professor McIntyre. Here's what I got. <laughs> so if you saw the poster outside, that was mine, as pale and sickly as ever. Um, a little bit of background for me, don't mind the little me, but... I like to do animation, just like everybody else here does. I like to do music, and I really enjoy skateboarding. So I like those themes a lot, especially in presenting or developing ideas. Um, and I utilize these programs and the classes and courses that we've taken to have a good fun spin on it. You know? So I want to show you my demo reel. Let's see how. It Next up, this was a project revolving around creating a board game that's already been made. What's well, perfectly fine, you know? I mean, what's wrong with the old board game? I like Mousetrap. Even as a kid, I loved it. Um, check out what I did. Oh, to be in 2006 and see a cake pop for sale with that <laughs> sign on it again. <laughs> this next one was a motion graphic or motion animation design, however you want to phrase it. 
Uh, this one focused around a themescape. So what I wanted to do was a, was a cool one. So what's cooler than ice? Um, the original audio, um, realizing that it's more mainstream, as in like the audio is a little bit more well known. They're like a small indie band, Radiohead. <laughs> yeah, nobody's heard of them, I know. But um, I switched it out and sped it up a bit to give it a cooler feeling since it's ice. Junk! <laughs> there, I said it. Um, this was my concept for my capstone. Like most people, this was a passion project that I wanted to finally make come to life. This was fleshed out over the course of months. Um, process work, that is. Um, everything else kind of fell into place unexpectedly, whether intentionally or not. That's an, that's an oxymoron, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, but uh, what I had for the original concept was I really like the old school Cartoon Network. I really like old, the old MTV animation. I like Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I wanted to orient a graffiti style skater kid kind of idea. So this is the concept. You don't have to read it, I promise. Um, but it's kids doing what they love. It's as simple as it can get. So here are the characters. Um, I wanted to do something colorful, vibrant, action-packed. I even wanted to have something that would be iconic silhouette-wise. So something that you could see in the shadow and go, I recognize that. With that, I have the concept art. I have what was being constructed, some of the finalized changes. You see some of these X's out of here. That just shows that I didn't know what I was doing. I was basically shooting spitballs at the wall, hoping I could get something right. But we finally came to a decision with a rough storyboard. Um, it's hieroglyphics to most of you here, but that, for us that know it, I think we can hopefully get the same idea or get the general idea of what's happening. But instead of me going through that, we'll show it to you instead. The music, I used all on my own, all the sound effects, all the music and audio was done by me and my friend Mariana, who is unfortunately not here, but she did a killer job, so I'm very happy and pleased. One of the biggest um, crucial things about the music especially too is I wanted a garage type band sound. And if you can read that, it says less in tune the better. Um, <laughs> as ironic as that is, it's the kind of idea that I was hoping to get with it. Here's some backgrounds. Um, you don't care. I, I don't even care. This is the some of the concept art and the finalized art and the working posters and stuff like that. Stuff to kind of give it a advertisement kind of idea. And the finishing credits. But here's the real meat and potatoes of it.
so far, but I promise it's going to be just as strong as it just began. So, I'd like to introduce Nat to the stage. Hello, everyone. I managed to get sick like the day before. <laughs> Um, so, worst timing in the world, but they don't sound too bad. All right. You seen this guy around? <laughs> There's some posters up for them. I hope they get caught. Um, but, uh, hi, my name's Nat. Um, I'm mostly a 2D animator, and I'm graduating from both uh, animation and illustration this uh, semester. Um, so, for my senior show, I picked uh, several projects that I uh, feel marked my um, the growth of my journey from both like an artistic sense and also like um, like the kind of like ambition that I have towards what I create. So um, without further ado, you wanna see a demo reel? <laughs> <laughs> The first project I want to show you guys uh, was the stop motion anima animation I did, um, which I hadn't done stop motion in a really long time, since maybe I was like 11 uh, with Legos, <laughs> and it was not good. Um, so I was like, how can I, how can I make this interesting? And I was like, let me do something else I've never done before, which is needle felting for all my puppets. Um, but I uh, wanted to take a play on just like a little short scenario, these two like middle school friends with an unusual dynamic. Um, and I wanted to have like a play on horror tropes and expectations. So these little guys are buddies. Um, and uh, here's some of the process work for it. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can tell from the chaos in the background just how it was going. <laughs> um, also like it took up a lot of space. I made them maybe way bigger than I needed to. Um, uh, there was also a lot of stabbing of fingers involved because needle felting uh, involves needles, believe it or not, based on the name. Um, <laughs> so here's uh, some more work in progress stuff after I uh, was almost done with my first little guy. Um, you can kind of get a, a gist of how big they were. Um, and then I also have a little work in progress with the background and then I have my two characters. Um, and then over here, uh, just some little shots like uh, showing off the environment that I created for them and like putting in the fun little details, like the tape on the posters, it was so fun. <laughs> um, and uh, so I have the animation for that um, right here.
And that was also difficult, I forgot to mention, because um, with stop motion, you need little things to hold down the feet of your characters. And I did not think about that at all <laughs> until I was animating. So I used needles, <laughs> needles through the cardboard. And I sounded so violent talking about it. Like, yeah, I'm stabbing these, the felt in this puppet and I'm like shoving needles in their feet. But <laughs> the, uh, the uh, end product hopefully is pretty cute. Um, so this next project, this is actually from a little while ago. Um, but I wanted to include it because it was one of the first times I went really in depth with uh, like visual development on something. Um, there are a lot of sketches involved, uh, but basically the gist of this is that it was a game design um, and I wanted to make something uh, that uh, represented a lot of the games I enjoyed playing in high school, like the, uh, the sort of um, RPG maker, like not anything particularly uh, interesting mechanically, but like a silly storyline to go along with it. Um, so the concept here was this uh, lady and her dog who moved into a haunted house. And uh, uh, this house, as I mentioned, is haunted. <laughs> and um, the uh, owner does not notice any of it, um, especially uh, when the ghosts get a little bit more violent. And it's up to her long-haired chihuahua <laughs> to protect her and try to get to the bottom of this. So um, here are my initial sketches for this, this little dog, this little silly dog. Um, and this is like the main uh, ghost lady. Um, her name is Celine, and she uh, was an artist and like star um, in the 20s who like disappeared mysteriously. Turns out she went to this one particular house to live the uh, rest of her life in solitude. Um, but it's not solitude anymore because there's, like I said, annoying dog. <laughs> um, and then I have some final turnarounds for both of these characters. Um, I wanted uh, Mocha the dog to seem really erratic and Celine to have this kind of like like I said, um, 1920s kind of influence, really interesting shape language with the, the hat. Um, and then I have some more uh, stuff here. That's Susie, who's the owner of Mocha, who loves horror um, and doesn't know that she's living in a horror movie <laughs> at this point. And um, one of my little ghost designs, as well as some UI stuff. Um, I also had fun uh, with the props and backgrounds, just kind of like making this dusty old house <laughs> and um, picking out some props that um, you could use that your thing like I didn't include it in here but the little Wii remote is like a throwable so you can <laughs> use it to attack the ghosts um but uh, uh here is um the last step that we did for this project which was a little um in-game screenshot and then a little animation showing what gameplay might look like Um, I was in Colomancy along with uh, him, Lauren, Sebastian, and Jonathan, uh, duly departed. He's not here. He's fine. <laughs> I don't know why he said that. Um, <laughs> uh, but so my role in this, um, I'm trying to show you guys some stuff that you might not have seen. Um, I was the project manager, which I had no experience with being a project manager. Um, and I basically wanted to set things up so that we could follow the animation timeline like within our little window of time, because this is a semester long project. Um, but I also wanted to make sure that like uh, we were staying within a consi consistent style, but still having as much creative freedom as possible. Um, so I had like this little um, style guide um, that where I like created brushes and kind of like uh, laid out the expectations for that. Um, I had like a, a color script, which is basically in a project as things move along, the um, colors will change to kind of complement the action. And then also some, uh, some concept stuff for the kitchen, and that's the one that we ended up going with. Um, I also, um, we each designed a character for this project, and I chose the critic, um, which I landed on this pretty fast. I just like, I like shape language a lot. I thought that she had like a very like particular kind of aura. <laughs> um, so that was my character for that. And then here's just a little thing with um, some of the animation that I did for this, if you can point out my parts here. Um, and also the, <laughs> the little random shock value uh, slide that I made for it. But yeah, that was Colomancy. And now, on to the big bad, the capstone. Um, so I was really lost in the beginning with how to approach this because I had built it up in my mind as like, oh, it's this, this final project. This is the last thing you're gonna do in school. And I wanted it to be good, but I like was struggling so hard to come up with an idea that I felt really rang true. Um, uh, and then I decided to base my project off of burnout. <laughs> 
um, which uh, is unfortunately all too common in art school. <laughs> but I wanted to try and tackle um, sort of taking something that was initially a passion and uh, like trying to monetize it, trying to turn it into a career and how it can lose context in your mind um, and how it's important to stay in, t in tune with that original, um, that original love you had for something. Um, and so previously that, that was my character design. Like I said, I also kind of came up with this one uh, or came on to this design pretty quickly uh, because I just wanted to uh, choose a character who had a bunch of aspects that I enjoyed drawing a lot. <laughs> um, so there's just some little test animations I did pretty early on trying to get an idea of how I wanted this thing to move. Um, and then I got into storyboarding a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this is my first time like actually going really in depth with a storyboard, um, trying to plan out all the action because this was such an important message to me. Um, and uh, also I found a program that made my life a lot easier, so I was like, I was on top of it. Um, and this character, because of their fun to draw uh, like appearance for me, uh, they ended up sneaking into a bunch of other stuff, just like whenever I had the, uh, any downtime, I would draw them or like include them into my uh, other projects. Um, but without further ado, you want to see the full thing? Because here it is. Yeah, just going back to childhood, kind of, to refine that spark. And I've been doing that, and it, it's very important. Make sure you do that. I'm looking at all you guys right here. I'm looking at all you guys. Um, but yeah, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you so much. And I would like to welcome up to the stage Sojung.
Hi everybody. Thank you all for coming to our senior show. My name is So Jung Ho and good afternoon. <laughs> Thank you. I will start with my demo reel. Today I prepared four projects to show you. They are Christmas Polaroid, Don't Smell My Feet, Bird Poop, and Stop Sign. Three of them are stop motion and one of them is a 2D animation. Before I start talking about my first project, I want to briefly share with you where my inspirations come from. My inspirations come from family. The work I make explores relationships. The relationship with my dog, Gami, my husband, my parents, my brother, and his family. Although the relationship I have with Kami seems one-sided, I can't help but continue to win her love by giving her love. My aim is that the audience finds connections with my work that remind them of their own loving relationships. The first project is called Christmas Polaroid. The goal was to create a stop motion. And for those of you who may not be familiar with stop motion, it is a series of frames or photos put together to create, a, uh, create the appearance of movement. And for my stop motion, I chose to use a variety of medium, such as clay, felt, and paper. This project, I was inspired by my dog. Um, I had a situation during Christmas. I wanted to take a photo with her. She did not feel the same way. <laughs> the process began with storyboards. In the story, you will see an unhappy dog and happy girl taking a photo together, but you will see later how the photo actually turns out. After the storyboards, I moved on to making the characters, the dog and the girl, and the indoor environment. I had a really fun time making this project because I got to create a different ending to how it actually turned out in real life, which was an unhappy photo of our, our dog, <laughs> but I hope you enjoy Christmas Polaroid. my mind she was smiling in the photo <laughs> no. um, second project is don't smell my feet this was a project for our game design class and our goal was to create a 2d animation of a gameplay 
Again, I was inspired by my dog. I love smelling my dog's paws, and she does not like it. So I started thinking, hmm, I wonder what she thinks of it every time I try to smelling her paws. So in this game, the player will get to control the dog and try to avoid the girl from smelling her paws. Because every time the girl succeeds, the dog's energy level will go down. <laughs> the process began with the drawings of the dog and the girl. And that's an unhappy dog and a happy girl. <laughs> After the characters, I moved on to the two environments, the bedroom and the living room, and the props. And in the animation, you will see Susie, the girl, sneaking up on Miso, the dog, and smelling her paws. <laughs> For this project, I wanted to reach the audience who might also like smelling their dog's paws <laughs> and, uh, and think from dog's perspective. So without further ado, here's Don't Smell My Feet. project is called Bird Poop. This was actually part of a group project that I got to work on. Um, so the group's plot is that there's a wizard's apprentice who boards the train and this apprentice goes through different train cars, also different adventures and medium. So each of our members took a train car and some of us did 2D, some of us did 3D. I chose stop motion. My inspiration came from birds. I had to stop in front of train tracks one day. I was looking around, I saw birds sitting on power lines, and I was wondering what they were thinking about. And it looked like they were staring at me, or the humans, and not liking us because we took their habitats. So in return, they poop on our cars. <laughs> My process began with storyboards. And in the animation, you'll see two birds on a tree and the apprentice driving his car through a neighborhood and the bird will poop on his car, and the apprentice will panic, and then he will fly through a train door. After the storyboards, I moved on to making the environment, the props, the characters, and at the bottom right corner, you will see the train door at the end that he will fly through. For this project, since it was my first time getting to work with group, it was, it was my first time learning to collaborate, also, it was just fun time working with other people. You get to hear other brilliant minds think and get inspired by them. So here is Bird Poop. Stone project is called stop sign. I chose to do my favorite animation, stop motion. Again, I was inspired by my dog um, and the daily walks I took her on. Any dog owner can relate. Every time I took her on a walk, she would become obsessed with smelling stop signs. Sometimes, or all the time, I was jealous of the stop signs because she would show more affection towards them than towards me. <laughs> so I started wondering, what, would she give me the same amount of, amount of love if I dressed up as a stop sign? <laughs> so there I am. 
For this process, I began with storyboards. And in the story, you will see unhappy dog and happy girl going on walks. And the dog comes across the stop sign and starts smelling it, starts falling in love with it. So the jealous girl will think of an idea to dress up as a stop sign. But you'll get to see whether she wins the love or not. <laughs> After the storyboards, I moved on to making the two environments, the indoor and the outdoor, and then the characters. And there was a progress be uh, in this stop motion compared to the previous one. Um, I made five different masks for this um, stop motion, and this helped me a lot with making smoother transition between exp uh, expressions. Okay. Now I hope you all enjoy the stop sign and see whether the girl wins the dog's love. that was a sad ending. <laughs> so my biggest takeaway from doing many projects at ECU is that I truly enjoy and feel warm inside when I get to work on pieces that involve personal relationships, especially my dog, Gami. Um, because I love stop motion, I wanted to share my experiences through that medium. And although many of my projects have been related to my dog, I want to continue growing not only as an animator, but also reaching out to the diver diverse audience through diverse contents. Um, I'm also, I also learned that I'm still trying to win my dog's love. <laughs> <laughs> everyone, hope you guys are doing well. I'm Kareem, and uh, I'll start by showing you my demo reel.
for my first project I'm showing you. It's a uh, infographic. Um, we were tasked with uh, creating an infographic about a topic of our choice, and I found a video by the YouTube channel ASAP Sciences that talks about how much of something will kill you. First, I did storyboards for this um, to get a visual of how I would go about it. Then I created some style frames based on uh, sections of the video. And then these frames were drawn after I listened to the audio, and then um, they're broken up and animated. And then here's that infographic. We all know to stay away from poisons, like mercury, where ingesting a 200 milligram dose would kill you. But did you know that 70 cups of coffee contains enough caffeine to kill a 70 kilogram person? This amount of caffeine can trigger heart palpitations or even cardiac arrest. Too much liquid in general can be dangerous as well. Though it takes a lot, water intoxication from around 6 liters causes brain cells to swell, leading to headaches, seizures, comas, and even death in extreme cases. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more weekly science videos. For my next project, um, this was where we got a chance to design a game from the ground up, starting with the story to eventually 3D modeling the characters and the environment. And this game I created is called The Bloodworm Tales. Um, it's based on a detective who's trying to solve the mysterious disappearances of people in the town while fighting the sudden appearances of infected creatures. So I started doing some environments um, that I might have been uh, might go into a model, so that would be like a cave or in a church. Then I, this is the uh, design of the detective, the secondary characters. And then there's the design of the infected people. Um, I base it off as if they were infected by some worm, hence the title. And that level of three character um, is why I base off the final 3D design. Then more props for the church. And then here's the 3D model environment of the church put together. For my final project, um, I wanted to create a 2D short. Um, I created this idea over winter break. It's about a group of soldiers who break into a prison to free their leader. Um, in this prison, they have to sneak around and fight. Um, ultimately, the idea kind of changed from that, but it's still there. I started with character designs of the soldiers. Um, Captain Zero is in the middle, and then Soldier 2 and 3. Here's their design sheet. And then the antagonist, the main android, so they'll be fighting. And then I did some color exploration. And then this is here, what the final characters would look like. Then I did some storyboarding. You'll see that's the animatic of the storyboards there. Um, I almost did about uh, over 100 storyboards, but I cut the uh, final story a little bit more, shorter. Then here's some other assets of the prison slash fortress and then the ship that the soldiers come in on. I only uh, drew, drew one side of each because I knew it wouldn't be showing too much. And here's some more environment work of inside the fortress. And then here's it all put together.
regards. <laughs> Let's keep moving. We already know the best route to get to the boss. No need for unnecessary conflict. My name is Alex. Um, this is my senior capstone. We're going to start off with uh, my demo reel. This is my first project. It is um, the first game design that we went over um, in that semester. Um, it's a, supposed to be a 3D platformer, sort of like Banjo-Kazooie or Spy Spyro the Dragon. Um, the plot is that the player must stop the spread of a serum that is giving um, superpowers to animals that don't have them and um, are turning the, the villain is turning them into a uh, army, basically. So this is the main character. Her name is Avery. She is a fruit bat. Um, I chose fruit bat just because I thought that bats are usually portrayed as villains and they're actually kind of cute. Um, so I figured I'd kind of flip that on its head. Uh, I also tried to do sort of a similar thing with um, most of the other characters. So um, besides Avery, which is this is her this is her finished artwork. Um, the major final villain is a ram who is, um, you know, which is a, a prey animal usually. Um, he has psychic powers um, and because the serum that he has uh, created hasn't been tested on animals who already have superpowers, um, he ends up kind of turning into a monster in the final stage of uh, the boss fight. and. Um, I really had fun designing these. This is his final reference sheet. Um, extra characters, this is a character I decided to create mostly just to play off the um, protagonist character. 
uh, as I didn't have a good way to characterize her. I also figured she would be an interesting character to play as after um, finishing the game for the first time. Uh, this is the first uh, boss. Um, his name is Marin. He's a German Shepherd. Um, and this is the second boss, uh, Dr. Emmett, who is a platypus. Um, he's the one who creates the serum. Uh, as for props, it was mostly just power-ups and collectibles as the games I based them off of have a lot of um, collectibles usually. They would essentially just make your character stronger as you went. Um, these are the collectible I decided on would be vials of the serum um, because I thought syringes might be a little too much. Um, and then this is the mech that uh, is featured in the second boss fight. These are the final props. And then the environments, basically um, this takes place in a city um, and each level takes place in a different part of the city. So level one would be the um, west side of the city. The second one would be in a warehouse that turns into a laboratory um, in the east side of the city. And then the final uh, level would be um, in the downtown section in an office park. Um, more environment. And these were the final two environments I made. Um, the user interface, basically just stuff like health bars, um, the title screen, I went over um, le level selection maps, um, pause menu, collectible menus. Uh, I actually really had a fun time making the menus out of everything. Um, these are the ones I basically settled on. Um, and then the final product, this is what a screenshot of the game might look like. And then um, the animation that we had to make, uh, including a walk cycle, a uh, run cycle jump, and a fourth uh, extra action. All right, so this was for our second game design class that I took uh, last semester. Um, so as opposed to a 3D platformer, this would be more of a 3D sort of um, stealth horror game. Um, in this one, you play as uh, the main character, Libertina, who has to rescue her friend um, from basically her father who kidnapped him at the start of the game. Um, her father is the god of death, so she has uh, death powers that would be included as a mechanic. Um, and at the end of the game, she would uh, receive a weapon that would allow her to um, defeat the final boss, basically. Um, this is the final turnaround we made, uh, since we had to turn these into 3D uh, models. Um, these are the enemies, basically the servants of Thanatos, who's the god of death. Um, they're basically just shadowy creatures who uh, patrol the forest um, that they are located in. Uh, each one of them has a different way to uh, get around them. Um, and I sort of ended up focusing on the wolf particularly because I didn't have enough time to make um, references for all three of them. But this was kind of the uh, style I was going to go for, the aesthetic I wanted the um, game to have. Uh, and there's the turnaround for the wolf. Uh, this is Thanatos, the final boss. Um, Woodruff, the one who is kidnapped at the start of the game. Um, Damien, who is meant to serve as sort of a tutorial character. Um, Umbra, who is a sorceress who offers to help uh, Libertina defeat uh, Thanatos. And Serena, who is an angel who uh, blesses the scythe weapon that is given to um, Libertina at the end of the game. Here are the props. Um, originally, uh, I was going to do the stuff for the seal that um, Thanatos would be con uh, contained in at the end of the game, um, but I didn't realize that we were supposed to sort of make more of an interior environment, so eventually I kind of switched over to more of a um, study as the interior environment I decided to go with was uh, Umbra's uh, cottage, which would serve as sort of a safe space for the player. Um, you wouldn't be able to be like harmed there and you'd be able to get like advice. Um, so this is the cottage that I went with, um, and this was the other environment that I had uh, thought about going with, um, and this was a final render of uh, what turned out to be the kitchen, 
I realized it made more sense if I made the study and not the kitchen. Um, 3D modeling, uh, some of the props changed a little bit over time. Um, this was UV texturing, so making sure all of the, uh, none of the images looked uh, stretched over each model. Um, and these are some of the textures I ended up with. I'm pretty happy with the flower. Um, and that was the final character model. I didn't actually have any uh, work in progress photos of it for some reason. Um, and then this was just sort of me placing everything ahead of time to get an idea of what the inside of the um, what the inside of the uh, cottage was going to look like. Um, this is what it looked like after I imported it into the Unreal Game Engine. Um, all of the potion bottles, stacks of books. Um, and then here are the final screenshots of what it looked like uh, in game. Um, I'm really happy with how this turned out still. All right, here is a video render of the location. And then uh, gameplay. Stone project is called We'll Meet Again, and it is basically a mu music video set to the song of the same name by a YouTube musician uh, named The Fat Rat. Um, basically, uh, the main character has to go on a journey across uh, dimensions with the help of a friend to uh, rescue her uh, husband. Uh, this is the main character. Um, these are actually characters I had already created before um, class essentially. Um, so they kind of already had set designs, um, but in a couple cases like this one, I decided her original design was a little too busy um, and then updated it accordingly for animation. Um, so this is Safi, this is the protagonist. Uh, this is her final reference. This is Saxon, her husband, um, his final reference. And then Beatrix, who is the friend um, that helps her get across different dimensions. Essentially, she has the power to create different um, portals leading to different dimensions, and um, she sort of harnessed that power into a device that allows Sappy to um, transport herself. Uh, this is her final reference, um, and this is sort of the um, final antagonist of the animation, um, and they're kind of an inventor. Uh, so all of this uh, robot concept art are basically robots that they created. Um, the one on the left is the closest uh, representation I have um, of the robot. Uh, props, not much, just the device and the weapons that um, Safi carries with her. And um, I really had a fun time in, uh, creating environments for it and really kind of figuring out, you know, what a different dimension might look like. Um, and these are the frames that ended up in the final animation. Uh, storyboards, like a lot of uh, my classmates, this are, these are the longest storyboards I've ever made. Uh, I think 11 pages worth. Um, and I made almost no changes um, to the animation <coughs> based on these storyboards. I think for the most part, uh, I may, might have cut a few things out, but that's about it. Um, but please enjoy uh, my capstone project. Thank you. 
go ahead and turn it over to Ashton then. A senior show by accident. That's my bad. <laughs> All right, so as I said, hello, I'm Ashton. I hope you guys are doing well today. This is kind of me, me in 2D. <laughs> but here's actually me, my portfolio, and all that. So, as usual, you guys know how this works. We're going to start with the demo reel. To start off, as Nikki wonderfully explained, I was part of the Wigs Waxy Fix project, and I'm just going to very quickly go over the stuff that I did for it. So to start off, I had the honors of doing our character sheets for all of our characters, and I even added some background ghosts, mostly to make the animation process a little bit easier for us. And then I also did some animation tests for Protector, because he was my favorite character, and he's still one of my favorite characters from this. Um, he originally had arms, but for time's sake, we get, took him away and gave him magic powers. <laughs> <laughs> and here we have a bunch of backgrounds that I colored. I had way more fun coloring the backgrounds than I thought I would. The backgrounds were done by Zoe, our group mate. And then a few of these are just some of the roughs that I enjoyed doing. And here we have them all colored and everything. Okay. So for my second project, I created a game that is based on a girl named Annabelle. She's a witch. And what she does is she has to go to the academy the next morning. But the problem is she doesn't know where her broomstick is. She has to find it <laughs> very quickly. So here's a lot of playing with her design and her inspiration. I wanted her to have, she uses a tool that is basically her blanket, but with her magical powers, she uses it to turn into any tool or weapon that she chooses. And that is a reference to the blanket in the top left. <laughs> the inspiration is from my own childhood blanket <laughs> that I still have to this day. <laughs> um, and then we have some broomstick uh, sketches and her character that I started doing. I very quickly leaned towards some pigtails because I really like the silhouette that I gave her in the top right there. And I also really enjoyed the look of her eyes being covered by her hat, so I also stuck with that concept as well. And here she was with color and everything. And here we have her bedroom that is not textured just yet. And then a lot of texturing. It was the most tedious process, but it was very fun to see the textures all come together once they were done. And this is a little turnaround of what she looked like in the end and uh, some progress on the left side. I think she turned out pretty good. <laughs> and this was the scene all together with her in the bedroom. And next up, we have the blueprints. The blueprints is 
it's basically coding. It was much more simple coding than I thought it would be, but it was still a very hefty process. So for the coding, we had to make the player interact with a light and be able to collect stuff. So she collects potions here. Stone. Um, I decided to do a music video based on Rare Americans. Their logo is right down there. Their song is Without You Around, and it is something that I wanted to make that was, as everyone else here, very near and personal to them. This was personal for me because I wanted to make this project dedicated to my father who passed when I was 12. I'm fun at parties, I promise. <laughs> so to start, I had her character designs. Here it is. I wanted to have her hair to be very spiky. It just immediately came into my head, and I wanted to have a hairstyle that I think would be fun to draw a bunch of times through the animatic. And finally, I decided on number five, which again is more pigtails, like from the last project. And this is what she looked like all together. And I had some backup outfits for her as well, which I didn't even use them for the animatic. And then came storyboards. <laughs> So many storyboards. Um, there were a few scenes that I didn't end up changing just to make it more cohesive, but overall, most of it is pretty much about the same. I'm not going to spoil the ending for you, so you won't get to see it. <laughs> All right, and here are just a bunch of environments that I moved to right after the storyboard. So our character Thorn was not floating into space. And now, I hope you guys enjoy the animatic, my final capstone.
Thank you guys so much. And now next up, I would like to welcome Kara to the stage. presenting was also a game design project for my game I it's sort of like a Harvest Moon or Stardew Valley kind of game you play as a little witch character and you grow plants and raise animals to create different kinds of potions to then sell back to your community so these were the starting silhouettes for my main player character um, I went into some different outfits ideas <coughs> if she's gonna wear gloves if she's not what kind of hairstyle she'd have, just more character exploring. Um, since she's a witch, I thought about ha giving her like interesting pupils. Since she's magic, she can kind of do what she wants. Um, this was the first rough like put together of what maybe I'd want the final to look like. And I was playing around with color studies and different palettes on her. And then this is my final turnaround for my character. And then this was an alternate uh, clothing for there's a mechanic in the game for to expand your farm you can use the potions that you make to fight different monsters that live in the like forest around your farm these were some sketches and rough ideas for the environment that I later modeled and textured and everything um, these were the props that go into that environment which I decided to make her like shack that you start off with selling the potions out of so she has a cauldron and her potions. There's a bucket of eyeballs. There's a plant box. <laughs> and then these are some of the finished screenshots from my final piece. This is her whole shed. Some beautiful pictures here. And then on the left is the coating I did where she goes to pick up her potions. Really fun, riveting game. <laughs> I was surprised I was able to get this, this coded. It was a challenge, but I was proud when I got it done. And then this second video is just showing off more of this beautiful 3D. <laughs> and yeah, that's my game. My second project I'm going to share with you is a infographic about jellyfish. So it's a motion design um, project, so it's all in After Effects. Um, these are my storyboards. They're pretty sh short, simple, to the point, and I stuck to them pretty closely for my animation. Um, these are some of the assets I used, um, just a generic jellyfish and a fish. This one is an immortal jellyfish. This is a polyp, which is what jellyfish start out as, and then a moon jellyfish. 
And then this one's a box jellyfish, which didn't end up getting used in the final animation, but I love this guy. <laughs> and this is a style frame, some more assets, and then this is my final um, jellyfish infographic for you. Jellyfish can be found all over the world, from deep oceans to shallow coastal areas. They've been around for hundreds of millions of years. Boneless, brainless, and bloodless, jellyfish are some of the most diverse and fascinating creatures in the sea. Jellyfish aren't actually fish. With thousands of different species and two different biological phyla, jellyfish is more of a broad term than anything else. Unlike fish, which have backbones, jellyfish are invertebrates. Jellyfish got their common name from the jelly-like material they're made out of, called mesoglia. In recent years, scientists have started using the umbrella term sea jellies to clear up the confusion. There is an immortal jellyfish. Jellyfish can be produced sexually by releasing sperm and eggs into the water and reproduce asexually by splitting into two or cloning. But at least one jellyfish can actually reverse the aging process. The Turritopsis gornea has earned the moniker of the immortal jellyfish for being able to undergo a process called transubstantiation. An adult or juvenile under stress, instead of dying, can revert back to a polyp and begin the life cycle all over again. It is the only animal in the world that is known to be able to reverse its life cycle. And that's my story. And then this is my capstone project titled Final Dance. I, for my project, I wanted to do um, a choreographed dance animation full of um, lots of movement. I want it to be really upbeat, lively, lighthearted, something fun for me to work on. <laughs> um, these are all of my storyboards. There are quite a few of them, and I, this took up a large portion of my time trying to time out with music, trying to get everything to work well together, and as many have said, that is the most storyboards I've done to this point. <laughs> Then I went on to the character designs. I started with her and what outfit she'd wear. I wanted to keep it simple enough to be able to animate it, but still be interesting to look at. Um, and this is a him, same idea. I played around with a couple different, and I took my favorite, which was all the way on the left, and then iterated on it to see if changing, if I wanted to make any changes, and I landed on these three for her and these three for him. And then I went into color palettes and I did a lot of color palettes. <laughs> um, I wanted to try um, to mirror them. So in some they have mirrored colors and that relate back to each other. And then I landed on this color palette. This was close to the end for them. And then I went back and I decided to do some hair studies, top rows for her, <coughs> bottom rows for him. Um, and same deal, I just was playing around trying to decide what I wanted to animate, <laughs> and then I landed on these final designs for my characters, and then this is my final capstone animation.
now I'd like to welcome Lauren. All right, so I'm Lauren, and like my peers, I will get this started with my demo reel after this loads. And this is my little character from the wanted posters that we posted along the uh, ramps. project I'm going to show you guys I called the Healer's Apprentice. This was my game uh, that I created in Hillary's class. For this I created um, Riley right here. This is before she gets textured and everything. Um, basically the premise of this game is it's kind of a life sim survival-esque game that also teaches you real world just wilderness knowledge. So it teaches you how to forage, uh, which mushrooms are safe to eat and which are deadly um, and then things like how to disinfect a wound if you're like stranded in the wild things like that and then I went ahead and modeled uh, her, me her mentor's uh, house so it's just got candles and then the mushrooms and everything and that's where her mentor Sonia would be um, here's me coming up with some of the character ideas I wasn't sure at first if I wanted her to be human or an elf or some kind of uh, animal-isk creature, so I ended up going with this character that's kind of based off of, or takes inspiration from Furbolgs from D&D, if anyone's familiar, and then I just kind of played around with different hairstyles. Here are some possible outfits that I did for her. And then this is the mentor character named Sonia. Uh, I was playing around with shape language and combining different features to see what I liked uh, paired together, things like that. And then here is both of their turnarounds and then some just images of them interacting together just to show the height difference and everything. And then here are some of the props that would be involved in the game. So since there is foraging, I went ahead and made a foraging knife. Uh, some of the mushrooms that you may encounter in the game, there's a jar to trap fireflies in so that you can use a natural light source for when you're out and about in the game. And then your mortal, mortar and pestle to make salves and things like that. The next project that I'm going to show you is called The Life of a Guinea Pig. Pretty self-explanatory title. Uh, basically, it's just going to show you different parts of the life of a guinea pig, and all of the sounds that the guinea pig makes in the animation are sounds that guinea pigs actually do make, and this was inspired by my guinea pigs. I have three. <laughs>
are some of the storyboards that I did for that. It was a relatively short process for the storyboards because it wasn't super long. Um, at first I went through and made very rough storyboards and then went back and redid them to kind of clean them up a little bit. And I was going to play around with ideas of basing the guinea pig characters off of my guinea pigs because there are different types. And one of the types that I was thinking of doing is an Abyssinian guinea pig. For those of you who aren't familiar, they basically just have hair and cow licks everywhere. Very cute. Um, but I ended up doing a more simple version just to help with animating. Uh, the next project I'm going to show is Coleman Nancy. You guys already sh saw the overall video that Jaren showed. So I just kind of figured I would show some of the character planning. I was in charge of creating the manager character. Uh, he was inspired by D&D &D once again, Tieflings. Um, just kind of played around with some different designs for that. And then each of us was in charge of a section. I got parts uh, five and eight, and these are just some of the storyboards that I did for that. And finally, my capstone, I called it The Last Job. And I will show you that now. I am flesh and I am bold, eyes up ting ting like glitter and gold. I am fire and my soul, eyes up ting ting like glitter. some of the storyboards that I did, very rough storyboards. I had planned to make the animation go longer, but unfortunately ran out of time. Uh, but basically, it's a druid character who can wild shape into animals. Uh, she gets hired to basically go steal this precious gem from the house that you see at the end. Um, and this is just her following her going to do that. Um, I played around with character design. Uh, I decided to make this kind of elf-esque creature. Um, played around with silhouette shapes and hair, and I decided, hey, I like those ears, so I'm going to stick with those ears. Um, and at first her hair was going to be more curly, but then it became this more shaggy look. And then each uh, different variation that I played around with had different animal counterparts. I tried to incorporate the skin, hair, and eye color into the animals, and then each animal has different markings to go along with it. And this is her turnaround. And some outfit ideas that I did, I wanted to try and keep it simple because animating a bunch of little details takes a lot of time. Um, and then finally, the shop clerk that you see at the beginning, just playing around with some more ideas. I have some characters inspired by sharks, uh, an owl creature, cyclops, and then that thing, which ends up becoming the shopkeep. And that concludes my presentation. I would now like to welcome up Hi everyone, I'm Sebastian. Let me full screen this real quick. Alrighty, um, this is my senior show. Uh, let's just change it up a bit and start with my demo reel. <laughs>
so the first project I'm showing is called A Fishy Day. It is a montage um, about a fish guy who is a student at ECU. Um, going around about his day, um, the challenge for this animation was uh, animating on real life footage and having him interact in that space. So th this right here is my storyboards. It's just literally, it just helped me uh, plan out where I'm gonna go to um, film um, around campus. Uh, this is some of the uh, footage right here. This is Mama the cat, who's a, a cat at our uh, apartment's bus stop, and she's very friendly and very, very sweet. So, and then more. Alrighty. So what I figured out how to do was um, take the footage and turn it into like an image sequence, so I can then put it into the animation program called um, Animate and then it'll just let me animate over it. I have to be like really picky about placement because every single frame changed the camera by like the slightest. So it was annoying. But here's some of the um, test footage. And this next one was an added scene from the library. And here is the final video. Y'all already seen this one, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. Um, so my character that I was responsible for was the main guy, the chef. This is some early sketches. Um, I don't know why we started with like middle-aged man and then shrunk him down. Um, right here, um, the idea was to, uh, since it's a restaurant setting and fantasy, we combined like a um, wizard outfit with like uh, chef attire. So this is what we ended up with. Um, there's some more sketches. And here he is. This is a turnaround. Alrighty. And here is some of the storyboards. Um, my part was part four, which was him taking in a bunch of orders, getting stressed. Um, it was like, like another montage sequence. And panicking when he grabs the um, critic's order. And from there, he decides to have it, the idea to grab the um, wand of the deceased founder and use it to make his life easier. And then we saw <coughs> what happens. And then the other part was part nine, which was the ending. Um, they serve the food to the critic and she tastes it. Taste it. Uh, sorry, I can't speak. Uh, anyways, she can't take, she tastes it. And then um, she likes it and they're relieved um, after an intense stare. Um, and so she leaves a good review and everything is okay. And then the chef uh, gets caught with the wand when he uh, uses it on a snail in front of the boss. So that's the rest of it right there. And I'm going to play just the part four real quick.
and just moving on from here. <laughs> All right, and this is called Vaporwave. It is the Themescape project, and the, for that video, the goal is to show different landscapes and environments based on a theme and transition between them. So my theme was Vaporwave, and I just like that aesthetic. I think it's neat, so I chose it. Um, this, these are the style frames. These are just mock-up images of the different landscapes that would be um, going through the video. And here's some more. And the last two right there. And then from here, I took those images and put them in the storyboard to try to figure out how to transition between um, all the different landscapes and just playing it all out. So there it is. And then from there, I drew them all in Illustrator. Um, this is just a spread of every single like asset that was um, used in the video. And then I would put into uh, After Effects, which is the program we use to animate um, our Themescape project. And then into Premiere to give it a VHS look. So this is the final video. my capstone project. So my capstone project, um, it is a proof of concept animatic um, along with character uh, designs and concept art of um, a project called uh, Anthrotech. Um, this is a, an original idea of mine. It's an action cartoon targeted towards um, older audiences. It has both sci-fi and fantasy um, aspects and it's heavily influenced by um, 2000s to early 2010s action cartoons and anime. All right, so the story premise goes, um, in the advanced and um, grand citadel of Eltis, um, humans live a rather carefree lifestyle. Uh, this is thanks to Dr. Salome, uh, founder and mayor of the citadel, and her work in the creation of the Anthrotex. These are androids with uh, very human appearances and mannerisms who um, take on the roles in this world seen as undesirable. So this is the beautiful city. Uh, so let's just destroy it. <laughs> all right, so it all changes when a uh, strange incident named the spark and the spread of a supernatural dark magic um, caused by a malfunctioning anthrotech um, creates conflict and chaos across the citadel. Uh, the story revolves around a group of four caught in the middle of this conflict. Um, they must put an end to it while uncovering the truth about their world and the um, strange magic. So starting with the process work, um, this right here is a like mood board that um, I set up. It has a bunch of like my inspirations, um, references, reference images, things like action poses stuff that we're gonna, and, and color palettes. So that's what's gonna help me with the visual development of this. And these right here are the early thumbnails, sketches, um, a bunch of different characters. 
and th this is environments. And then from there, I went into um, like character exploration for the designs, where I focused on like clothing, um, their body shape, and like their hair. Um, I did that for all of them. And I'll explain who these characters are a little later, but this is just process work. Some simple stuff, um, the color studying to nail down like a palette that I wanted for the characters. And then some rough sketching of um, the people who live in this world. Um, the top row is humans and what they would usually wear, and the bottom is the anthrotex and what they usually um, would wear. These are uh, different robots that would be in this world um, for different uses. The bottom ones are more casual um, little robots that are here to help. Um, and then like some vehicles. The top ones are like boss characters made by Dr. Saul made a hunt down our main group. And this is the mo corrupted monsters from the supernatural dark magic it can take over people and it causes th things like this to happen. Kind of strange. Anyways, we're going to start with the, um, the antagonist for this story. This right here is um, Dr. Salome. Um, she's the mayor and founder of Eltis, um, the creator of the Anthrotex and the, all the advanced technology in the city. Um, while beloved and trusted by the public, it's a facade that she puts up. Uh, she studies and experiments with the magic in top secret and has been since before even Eltis was established. Then the other antagonist is Radna, um, the malfunctioning anthrotech and believed to be the cause of the spark, um, controls the strange dark magic and uses it to cause chaos across the citadel. Um, and his grand plan is to wipe everything out uh, under the guise of liberation. And now our uh, main group of four. This is Arn. Um, he's an anthrotech and the main character. Um, he has personal history with Redna and is being pursued by Dr. Salome um, for being a nuisance to her plans. Um, he wants to put a stop to both of them and build a better uh, citadel for everyone to live. Um, he has electromagnetism powers and uses it to be agile and, and it channels through his arm. Right, Zeta. Uh, a human who is uh, smart and tech savvy. She meets Arin in the aftermath of the spark and helps get, um, get him better. Um, she joins the team to help Arin and find her family who she was se separated from after the spark. And she fights with the staff and other gadgets equipped with like uh, ice powers that she figured out herself. Alrighty, another character, this is Axel. Um, a human with strange electrical powers um, he has a personal vendetta against Dr. Salome, and this is because um, he was a escaped human experiment through her studies of the magic. Um, to, he's initially an antagonist, but becomes an ally. And the last one, this is Dolian. He's a human and Dr. Salome's son. Um, after having a falling out with his mom, he goes out into the city on his own. Um, he joins others and helps to stop his mom and take over. Uh, he's skilled in archery and equipped with these uh, gloves that can break down metal and um, bend it um, that he stole from his mom. And now the concept art pieces. You saw one earlier and the two cities, uh, two city landscapes. This one's a conceptual piece uh, of just like a uh, city from the ground floor uh, people walking through, kind of what uh, life would look like. <clears throat> and then this next one's an action um, piece between our main protagonist and another antagonist. And then the next three are more focused on the group together. This is them interacting in the, the um, Zeta's base with a, a lot of planning, how they're going to um, solve this conflict and stuff like that. Here's an action um, piece with, with all four of them. And 
And then another one that uh, highlights um, the stakes that they're in and them hiding away as like a rebellious uh, group of people. All right, and the storyboards, yes, it, there's a lot. I think there's, I think it's probably the most. I don't, I'm not too sure. But the basic um, summary of the animatic is that it's just a focus on the, um, the environment of the city and what the anthrotechs are about, what they do. And then showing off the spark and the aftermath about um, with a focus on Arn and what he can do and what his um, in in the situation that he's in. So we'll just go through these kind of fast. And then play the final animatic. <laughs> to welcome up to the stage um, Elizabeth slash Lizzie. <laughs> Where are we at? To the, I'm Elizabeth Herdan. Let's dive into my demo reel. Oh, what? There we go.
Thank you. Uh, so the first project I'll be showing is the group collaborative animated short that uh, me, Tori, Josh, Lindsay, Jayla, all made together. Uh, I'd like you guys all to rise up for some recognition. Thank you guys. So this animated project was about two young kids who are playing unsupervised uh, and find a box still dedicated or said to be delivered to the president. And these two kids decide that they're going to go all the way to the White House and deliver it to the president themselves with a lot of really crazy roadblocks along the way that get more and more hectic. So here is like a little bit of our process. We printed out a lot of our visual development uh, just so we could like kind of remind ourselves like where everything is, who is there, what our direction is. Uh, these are some animated shorts that didn't make it in due to some rearrangement of the storyboard. And these are some of the character models that I did for the short. So this is Sprout, one of the protagonists, uh, one of the main two kids. And these are a lot of the background characters uh, for the scene that I was dedicated to make and um, for the rap funeral. And these were the environments that I made for the animation. I try to make one for every single location that the kids end up going to. And then these were the environments for the specific scene that I animated in the funeral home. And without further ado, here's the full thing.
we go. So these were just a couple of the clips from the scene that I was designated to animate, which was the rap funeral scene. So the next project I will be presenting to you guys is the game concept design that we were all tasked to make. Um, my game was about a shape-shifting journalist who is investigating the mass disappearances <coughs> in the city. And so this is some of the concept design for that character, me trying to figure out, you know, who this character is, which is hard when they're a shapeshifter. Um, and this, these are the character sheets. The, to the left is the protagonist, Salem, who is the detective, and to the right is her mystery-solving companion, who is a human, and together they try and find more mutants to help them all figure out what's going on and why people are disappearing. So I took that project into our 3D game design project, uh, where we had to make a model, assets, and an environment in 3D uh, using like Maya, ZBrush, um, Substance Painter, Unreal, which were really fun to learn. Uh, I really grew to love ZBrush and Substance Painter, so I was really excited to learn those. And that was the final of how the model turned out for the character. Just a little bit of what it looks like to texture uh, as part of a little process. It's really tedious, but it was really fun to learn, so. And this is how the room and the character turned out um, when we put it in Unreal Engine. And I think they turned out pretty good. Just some of uh, the blueprint testing everyone was mentioning before, where we had to do very like easy but tedious coding to do commands. And this was the video where I tested the commands like with the lighting, camera, uh, picking up like an inventory. And finally, the capstone project. When we were told to make a passion project, uh, something that you know we want to do, I kind of had to figure that out, like what I like to do in animation since there's so much to do in it. And I really love visual development and animating, so I wanted to make an animatic where we follow or are led through a lot of environments that are explored with depth um, and kind of just get to kind of feel immersed like the character is. So I decided to start with the character since that's kind of like who we, the audience, are following throughout the environments. And so I had a lot of character silhouettes to kind of figure out, you know, shape language, what is an interesting shape to follow. Since in a lot of environments, the character is probably going to end up looking really small and we want to be able to find them. Some more in-depth concept sketches. This is the character I ended up going with. Um, I, I had to think more about who this character was because coming from just, oh, we're following a character through all these in-depth environments was really too vague for me to personally relate to and it kind of was hard to find a starting point. So I had him think more in depth about, you know, what is this character's motivations going on this journey? So I decided to make a character who was an artist looking for inspiration and they go into this very last endless library with too many options for inspiration. And they come across a book that, chal that challenges the reader to kind of go on the same journey that the author did. And the character is really intrigued by the mention of treasure at the end of this journey. And as they go, they kind of discover a lot of how they connect with the author and the environments. And they are able to kind of find inspiration to draw again. And I thought that it was a nice message to have some a piece for a final capstone at least where it's about going out and finding inspiration in the world and being able to connect with others even if you don't really know them. So the, here's some of the environments I ended up making. Some sketches of the library. I had to make a lot of sketches for the library because it's like the setting scene where we're given more narrative to follow this character, follow them looking for inspiration, and then follow them landing across this book that challenges them to go on the same journey as the author. So it's like the longest, more narrative consecutive scene, so I had a lot of sketches involving that area. Uh, this was one of the other environments I did, the towering flower forest. 
um, which was really fun and probably one of my favorite locations. Just, I mean, could you imagine tall, beautiful flowers like trees? The other location, which was the last location, was um, a, a, an underwater waterfall ocean, which is inspired by a real location of Marasha, uh, where it's kind of an illusion though, it's not real in real life, but basically the clear water surface creates an illusion of an underwater waterfall because of how the sand is depositing on the ocean floor. Uh, so I kind of wanted to take that and make it into like a, like a fictional but like real location where it's actually an underwater waterfall. And at the center is a clearing where the character ends up. They pop through. Um, the last location in the center of that waterfall is a shell lighthouse. Um, it's a really important location for the story, so I had to explore a lot of different shell options, um, which I ended up with that one on the left. I really explored assets, and like, since I love visual development, and this project is about visual development and animation. Um, so I wanted to really figure out what kind of inventory or tools this artist would take with them on a journey. Like, would they know that they should take certain things because they're an artist and they're not a traveler? So I had fun playing with that. Similar theme. This is also the longest storyboard I've ever done. Uh, and it's kind of rough, but it was really fun to make and I took it very seriously um, because I ended up really loving this story. And here it is. I kind of liked the idea of the character as they go along the journey, noticing all of the changes that the writer didn't experience. Like, the writer is like, oh, this was a popular town. And the artist is realizing a lot of time has passed, so they're also having their own joy in note taking the differences between the times. project and I'm really excited to further it and like finalize it to the point that I'm satisfied with so but for now I'm glad you guys could see what I have to offer and thank you for coming. <laughs> Next up on stage is Tori. senior presentation. Uh, first, we'll uh, have my demo reel of uh, some of the projects I've worked on the past two years I've been here.
first project I'm going to talk about is, um, um, it's called Subway to Hell. It's um, a game concept that we had to come up with for our video game, uh, uh, assignment. And, uh, kind of a summary of, uh, the story. Uh, a girl goes missing and her body has never been found. People have to inspire how or why she went missing until one day you, as a player, decide to go figure out the mystery of it all once and for all. And it's a bit so 2D and 3D puzzle and it's exploration story game. Um, here are some of my main character's uh, design. Um, I really enjoyed uh, uh, drawing the different different kinds of outfits for And then this is the other character. Uh, the other main character, uh, Evelyn, uh, who is the girl that went missing. Um, that's her train form. And then some props and items that I uh, uh, did for this game. Uh, and uh, environment sketches, uh, you know, to give off that subway train feel. And then uh, we worked on uh, 3D models. Uh, here are some environment with the 3D models. Um, and, uh, this was uh, me messing with the blueprints. And then showing the, the, the environments and props I made. Um, and then uh, um, next is my uh, is a group project that I really enjoy working on with um, Elizabeth, Josh, Jayla, and uh, uh, Lindsay, uh, which you far already seen from Elizabeth's presentation. So I'm going to go over this really quickly. Uh, I worked on. Um, the old lady and the tsunami cats uh, designs. And then I helped work on some of the environments um, based off of Elizabeth uh, sketches. And I, I drew the, uh, the White House. And then I did uh, the second uh, part of the storyboard uh, while Lindsay did the first part, which uh, you will see soon. Um, I, I worked on the rap funeral the old lady and the cat tsunami, uh, and then the end um, meeting the, pr uh, the president. Uh, some scenes I oh, uh, some scenes I worked on. Uh, I, I mainly uh, did the old lady and the cat tsunami scene, and a little bit of the rap funeral. And now. Onto uh, my capstone project called Unwind. Uh, uh, these are my character Clan uh, Toffee. Um, uh, these are when I was figuring out what I wanted to do for um, this capstone. Um, this is my character Clay, uh, just kind of figuring out like the type of clothes he would wear his overall design, um, some props and food that, um, you know, uh, that you would see in a kitchen. Um, uh, here are my storyboards. Uh, I spent a lot of time on them. Um, and then, um, here's, Here's uh, the animation.
J. Love Fisher. All right, we're on our last legs. How we doing out there? <laughs> All right. As you heard, my name's Jayla. My main focus here is character design, though, thanks to Amy's class. I have also found a love for motion design. This here is my demo reel, which is basically a trailer of what I can do that I send to any employer that I want to get with. got two projects to show you guys before my capstone. Got to save time. So start off with my infographic. You've heard what that is. Just a nice way to show off information without all the textbook reading. The minimum for the project was 30 seconds. And I was like, what could I get across in 30 seconds? What happens in 30 seconds? And I looked that exactly up on Google. And I found this infographic on DrEd.com about what happens to the body in 30 seconds. So, what happens in 30 seconds? You'll think about 25 thoughts in 30 seconds. Your eyes will blink 6 times in 30 seconds. You'll exhale 0.3 grams of carbon dioxide. The heart beats 36 times in 30 seconds. Your body produces 300 joules of energy and produces 72 million red blood cells. Your blood travels 7 kilometers around the body. All in 30 seconds. The next project also has to do with the video game idea. However, that would be a lot to go through, so I'll just focus on the character design stuff I did. My concept was basically to make a fighting game. Think Street Fighter, that kind of stuff, or Tekken. Be each based on a different music genre. Each character have a different music genre, and they're all fighting to see which one's the best. These next Several slides will basically show the process of making a character for country music. Because I think they're neat. I don't actually like country music, though. I just think the vibe is neat. <laughs> just me going through the different variations of what she could look like, what her personality might be, her general shape. Because in this, I had to also think about what she would look like in 3D. No, I won't be showing off the 3D model. It's bad. <laughs> This is her final turnaround, which will be used to make said 3D model. Still not showing it. <laughs> then we get to my capstone project called Genre Immersion. Now, I've had this in mind since fall semester because as a part of the Honors College, I had to start way back when and have it done early for me. It was during my time here I decided to be a character designer, not a 2D animator. So I decided that would be what my project focused on. I'll create five designs, each based off a different genre. And the five genres I chose were slasher, fantasy, western, sci-fi, and mystery. I didn't want it to be just me showing pictures on the screen, though, so I figured, what's an interesting way to get this across? 
stick with the video game thing. So I had to think about what the user interface, which is how people would interact with the game, make that look interesting. Once I got that settled, I moved on to my silhouettes, figuring out the general shape, what they look like from afar. No sure if I, not sure if I did it right, but I had fun with it nonetheless. It's funny, I started out with Mystery not liking it, and by the end he was kind of my favorite. <laughs> Still hate sci-fi. <laughs> From there, I took the silhouettes and figured out what exactly they would look like, sticking with the general shape and vibe they had giving off. Some were easier than others. Sci-fi was the worst. <laughs> with Western, I think I just kind of knew what I wanted from the get-go and ended up skipping straight to all the exploration stuff. He's bald. <laughs> He's my favorite. I just took the stranger danger sign you'd see in neighborhoods and went with it. <laughs> I wish I could have done both of these, but at the end of the day, I chose the second one. And there we move on to the final designs where I created the character turnarounds. I have like two other angles, but they don't really matter here. I just wanted them to spin. With some characters, I wasn't exactly sure what colors to go with, so I had some color alternatives, put them in the class Discord, and got some opinions. I believe they made the right choice. <laughs> Sci-fi had a lot of options, and the general consensus was, just show all of them, so I did. <laughs> I didn't want it to be boring with me just showing the front face of the characters on the select screen, so I created some individual headshots of them, just to get across their personality and vibes, because you weren't going to get anything else. <laughs> of course, that meant for all of the sci-fi alternatives, I had to create alternate ones. She's still cute, though. Finally, we get to my animation. Hope you enjoy. you for like eight minutes. <laughs> Next up we've got Lindsay Mumpower. Hello, my name is Lindsay Mumpower. I focus on creating character designs, illustrations, and storyboards, along with 2D animations. 
Big surprise, we're starting with the demo reel. I wanted to show my themescape, which I've titled The Ocean. Uh, for the concept, I've always found it interesting that we know less about the ocean than we do about outer space. And for my themescape, I wanted to combine the, both like aspects of the unknown and space and just various aspects of it. Uh, and I wanted to explore this combination and I want to, would like to continue doing that in the future. This project also helped me get a lot more comfortable with After Effects, which is something I now really like to do and hope to continue in the future. To the uh, side here are some storyboards of my uh, project. Here are some style frames, which helped me determine what I would like to, uh, what kind of style I would like to make the infographic or the uh, themescape in. These whales would look a lot different in the little uh, animation. And without further ado, I would like to... I would like to show my Wicked Sick, which ended up being a solar system uh, model. Originally, I had a few ideas, uh, but each of them involved space, as it's one of my favorite uh, things to learn about. Uh, the program I use is called Maya. It is a 3D modeling program we use to uh, animate and create 3D things in. Here are some concept sketches that uh, I started out with when I had to come up with my idea. Uh, this is my favorite 3D project I've done uh, because it utilizes texture and light sources, which is something I originally struggled with. Here are Here is one of my storyboards. Uh, I originally came up with two uh, um, little plot points, but I ended up going with the uh, just showcasing an orbit. But if you look closely, you can see a little UFO flying around.
Blackstone, uh, which is titled Evelyn's Quiet Day. It's about this little character right here. Her name's Evelyn, she's a gnome. Uh, and I wanted to make a sort of proof of concept for a idea I kind of had about this little character who is very introverted, getting thrown into various situations from her very extroverted friends. When coming up with her design, uh, I originally uh, drew her up a few months ago. This was her first design. And whenever I came back to this project, I decided to refine it. And I ended up going with the last palette, I believe. These were the silhouettes I had for Evelyn and her friends. Her friends were much easier to like kind of silhouette out as I already had kind of something in mind for them. But Evelyn herself was a little difficult because I had like the sort of vibe I wanted to go for but I didn't have her outfit down yet. Eventually, after I put it in the class Discord server, we settled on something like H. Next, I have some of my designs for Evelyn's friends. This is Flower. This is the Fisherman. And this is Hat. <laughs> I wanted them all to have a sort of distinct color scheme and I wanted them all to kind of look, like, go together consistently. Originally, I was going to do this in full color. Uh, however, I realized not a lot of animatics are in full color, and I ended up grayscaling it. But these are some of the style frames that I used to help determine what they would look like. These are my storyboards, or at least my rough storyboards. Um, this is one of the longest storyboards I've also done, and I had a lot of fun doing these, and I might revisit them in the future. Now, without further ado, this will be my capstone animatic. It's about a minute long. you all enjoyed. Thank you for watching. I would like to welcome Zoe to yes. this. <laughs> So, um, hi, I'm Zoe Passion. I, I'm so excited to show you my stuff. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, let's see. Uh, well, you know the drill by now, so <laughs> demo reel.
first project I'm going to talk about today is Harana. It's a video game design concept that I created um, in my sophomore year. And it's, um, I, I was like, a, I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I'm nervous. Uh, I'm a really big fan of JRPGs like Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy. So I wanted to create one with the story of Hades Town because I am a big fan of like um, um, Orpheus and Eurydice's story. So in this, in this um, video game, you play as Awit, who is a princess trying to save uh, her lover. <laughs> um, and uh, she has a magical guitar, but she doesn't know how to play it yet. So throughout the game, she's going to be bashing things with it. <laughs> but it's magic, so it doesn't break or anything. <laughs> uh, uh, this is um, Sinta, and she is um, the damsel in distress that we get to save in the story. Here are the props and user interface designs that I made for this game. My environment designs and how it's walk, run, jump, and hit cycle. All right, the second project that I did is Air Meta Spooky. It is a title sequence based on a children's book that I adored when I was a kid. Um, it's about this little girl who lives in a um, mansion, in a haunted manor with her uncle and her aunt. And um, I recreated the font based on the fonts from the books and also tried to copy Jimmy Pickering's art style as much as I could because it was a very um, influential art, art style to me as a, a, when I was like eight. <laughs> um, this is a page of my storyboard. I, I usually like to draw them in like um, traditionally if I'm not turning it into an animatic. And here is the title sequence. I'm an aspiring storyboarder. I love storyboards. <laughs> and um, like, so I wanted to, for my capstone project, I wanted to create a storyboard portfolio. Um, I made two, I was able to make two. I wrote three scripts, but I only had time to make two of the animatics. Um, so the first one is the drama and action storyboard, which is based on a story that I've like had, like, I, when I come up with stories, I usually just like put them in my notes and they sit there and do nothing forever. So, um, <laughs> I wanted to do something with them today, and uh, not today, this semester. Um, uh, it, for this one, it's based on these two characters. Um, they are the guardians of these holy weapons, and uh, but the character on the left, your left, uh, Ray, she uh, does not want to accept the responsibility. So she and Danny get into a fight about it. Here's some uh, more sketches of them. This was the process I had for writing the script. I kept track of their back and forth so I can maintain the tension of the story. This was the actual script. I did thumbnails on the margins. And this was the one of the, the pages of the very many iterations I did of the fight. And here's the actual fight.
so the second one that I did is based on these two other characters from another story that I did. Um, uh, this is Eliza and Adrian, and they are going to be looking for the headless horseman. Like, so, so Eliza's a detective type character, and she wants to solve the mystery because she doesn't believe in ghosts, and she wants to be like, well, it doesn't exist, so I'm gonna prove that. And Adrian, who is voiced by Jaren, <laughs> um, he he's like um, her best friend, and he's just gonna tag along for this. Uh, shenanigan. <laughs> uh, here's some headshots of them. The script process again. And here's the animatic. did good, didn't they? Yeah. We're so proud of you. Congratulations. And let me introduce you to our faculty, Wayne Godwin, Lori Godwin, Hillary Husky. And thank you all for staying. Um, I know it was long, but I think it was worth it, right? Hey, please take food. <laughs> I was like, people can either be nervous about that or nervous about that. 
there was a lot of there was a lot of fast. There was also a lot of slow. Yeah, I, I had a point where I was like, not like stage but like I stopped talking and it felt like forever. So I asked my girlfriend, she's like, it was like three seconds or something. I didn't even know. I did not know. Yeah, I didn't. I felt like, Is there anything we can do? Just take food. Take food.